Lions at Lunchtime, Chapter 9, Tiptoe. Jack and Annie crouched in the tall grass. There was a big lion, three lionesses, and a bunch of cubs. I think they're sleeping, whispered Annie. Yeah, said Jack, but for how long? He pulled the Africa book from his pack and opened it. He found a picture of lions sleeping under a tree. He read in a whispery voice, after a pride of lions has eaten, they rest for a few hours. The other, what did they have for lunch? asked Danny. Don't ask, said Jack. He kept reading. Sensing that the lions are not hunting at the moment, the other animals graze nearby. If they can graze, then we're safe, said Annie. She started to stand. Wait, Jack pulled her down. Not so fast. He peered around. The words in the book seemed true. The giraffes and the zebras didn't seem to be bothered by the lions at all. They might be safe, but I'm not sure about us. We need a plan. What if we wait till they leave, said Annie. That could take hours, said Jack. Plus, they might be hungry again by then. Oh, right, said Annie. So, here's the plan. We tiptoe, said Jack. Tiptoe? Yeah. That's your whole plan, said Annie. Yeah, tiptoe to the rope ladder, said Jack. Very quietly. <laughs> Good plan, Annie teased. Just do it, said Jack, and he stood up slowly. Annie stood with him. They began tiptoeing through the grass very slowly. The lion flicked his tail. Jack and Annie froze. When his tail was still again, they moved again. Suddenly, high-pitched laughter split the air. Jack and Annie stopped. The hyenas were back. They were standing off to the side watching Jack and Annie. Jack and Annie made silent monster faces and shook their fists but the hyenas only laughed some more. The big lion stirred lazily. He opened his golden eyes and Jack felt the hair rise on the back of his neck. The lion lifted his head and yawned. His giant teeth gleamed in the sunlight. He turned his head and looked around sleepily. Jack held his breath as the lion's gaze rested on him. The lion sat straight up. His piercing yellow eyes met Jack's and Jack's heart raced. His mind raced. He remembered something he'd read. Lions avoid giraffes. Jack looked around. There was a giraffe walking towards the tree that the magic tree house was in. And suddenly he had a new plan. Get under that giraffe, he whispered. Oh, you're the one who's nuts, Annie said. Jack grabbed her hand. He pulled her over to the giraffe and underneath it. The giraffe's legs were so long, Jack and Annie could stand up under it. Jack's head barely brushed the giraffe's golden belly. The tall creature froze for a few seconds and then she moved slowly towards the tree. Jack and Annie walked in the same rhythm as the giraffe. They got closer and closer to the tree house and closer and closer to the pride of lions. The big lion stood up. He watched them moving under the giraffe. The rope ladder was just a few feet away. Jack and Annie dashed out from under the giraffe to the rope ladder. Jack, Jack following right behind Annie. As they climbed, the lion growled and leaped at the ladder. The hyenas laughed. Jack climbed faster than he'd ever climbed. He leaped after Annie into the treehouse. Annie had already unrolled the scroll. The riddle was gone. In its place was one shimmering word, honey. Jack grabbed the Pennsylvania book. He opened it and found the picture of the Frog Creek Woods. I wish we could go there, he said. And just then, the giraffe stuck her head through the window. Bye, honey, said Annie, and she kissed the giraffe on the nose. The wind started to blow. The tree house started to spin. It spun faster and faster, and then everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 10, After Lunch. Jack 
opened his eyes. His heart was still racing. Hyena laughter still rang in his ears. We made it, said Annie. Yes, said Jack, but that was very close. Jack pulled, took another moment to calm down. And then he pulled the Africa book out of his pack and put it back with the other books. Annie put the scroll with the other two scrolls. The giraffe was the true honey on this trip, she said, sweet and golden and with danger all around it. Yep, said Jack, and now we have just one riddle to go. Yep, said Annie, ready? Yeah, ready. She started down the ladder and Jack followed. When they hit the ground, they walked the sunlit woods. Time for lunch, said Jack. I'm full from our picnic, said Annie. Same here, said Jack. What do we tell mom, said Annie. We say we ate our sandwiches coming back from the store, said Jack. What if she asks why, said Annie. Oh, just say we had a picnic with a messiah warrior in Africa, said Jack. Annie laughed right, because we don't want him to be mad at us for taking his honey. Right, said Jack. The honey from a beehive that a honey guide led us to. Right, said Annie. And that happened after an elephant gave me a shower and we scared off two hyenas. Right, said Jack. And after you fell into a mud hole because you were helping a million wildebeests migrate across the river. Right, said Annie. And all that was before a giraffe saved us from a lion. Right, said Jack. Jack and Annie left the Frog Creek woods and started up their sunny street. They were silent for a moment. And then Jack pushed his glasses back into place. We better just say we ate our sandwiches on the way home from the store, he said. Right, said Annie. And if Mama asks us why, started Jack. We'll just say it's a really long story, said Annie. Right, said Jack, with like 10 chapters. Annie laughed. Very good plan, she said. And they crossed their yard and went up the steps and through their front door. We're back, Annie shouted. Great, said their mom. Ready for lunch? the end.